Ninjago 2023 is coming faster than you think it is. Um, and so to prepare for the upcoming Ninjago United, this is going to be my video talking about my top 5 hopes for Ninjago United, aka Ninjago 2023. First up is something that honestly doesn't need to change, and that is the animation studio and style. Now, if you don't know, Ninjago has been animated by Wild Brain, formerly DHX Media, since 2019. And while it didn't start off all that great, they have progressively gotten better over the course of these seasons, and the visual effects look stunning. They are breathtakingly beautiful for a freaking children's cartoon. It's amazing how far they have come since their since they started back in 2019. And so, for the love of God, please do not replace them with another studio. Because I know a lot of people say we, they people wanted Wilfem back, but unfortunately, since Wilfem closed down um, earlier this earlier in 2022, we wouldn't know who the new studio would be. So, um, honestly, it's just better to stick with what you have. And another thing is, I don't want the animation style to change. To me, Ninjago works best when it's in 3D. I know that there are, have been some attempts at 2D, like the Gold Rush Ninjago Legacy short, um, and the few infamous ties from what, what was known in the Ninjago community as the anime style for three episodes, The Absolute Worst, Last of the Formlings, and Dungeon Party. Um, that to me is not a good is not good and th I know there was the backstory explanation for Wojira and Niad that to me is probably the only time in where 2d besides the gold rush animation but that doesn't really count considering gold rush is a canon um, that 2d actually works because it was two-dimensional but it's but it still respected the fact that they were Lego Yes, I know technically in their world, they are humans, or at least they aren't considered Lego, but we as the viewers interpret them as Lego, so we have to respect that. Um, this kind of logic is actually the same reason why I actually prefer the fan art that actually keeps the Lego aesthetic rather than trying to do something human, because to me, it's respecting the fact that they are, in fact, Lego. So... Um, don't change to 2D because past attempts have proven that it it's not really a wise decision to do so. Even if it's just for a little bit of in experimentation, it's better to just stick to your guns and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Next, this is something that absolutely, positively needs to be addressed. And that is whether Lloyd and Harumi are actually a couple in United, or if they had a had a relationship in there, because this has been a very big topic as of late, especially it, especially if you watch the ending of Crystallize, where it seemed like Crystallize showcased that Lloyd and Harumi were in a relationship, and a lot of people really took negative response to this, and for good reason. To me, this implies a Ninjago basically approves on abusive relationships. Now, some people have said, well, Harumi did all, did all that bad stuff in the past, but she's good now. That doesn't take away what she did to him. You can't just expect that all that stuff to go away just because they do a few good things in life. That's not how it works. So, I really want the Ninjago story to address this, because the former because the former lead, Tommy Andreasen, didn't really seem to give a really good explanation. It really came across as very half-assed and not well thought out. But to be fair, he was leaving Ninjago as well, so he probably just said it as a way of saying he just doesn't really care anymore. But this is a, we need an explanation for this, because we can't be left in the air with critical information such as this. 
because it could change our entire perspective on not just the characters of Lloyd and Harumi, but the entire message of Ninjago as a whole. Next, this has been the talk of the top talk of the town for quite a long while, and that is bringing back the 22-minute format. Now, I know you may have seen some videos saying about like, oh, how the 11-minute format is doomed to fail. Well, in its initial days, back when season 11 was the initial season to have this format, and while we may have been a little judgmental back then. I could safely say the 11 minute format, while it does have its positives, those negatives definitely outweigh those positives. Because the problem is that the those stories under 11 minutes just feel rushed and kind of feel... It feels very tight and very packaged. It's like they're trying to insert so much into so little time. And honestly, that's where the 22 minute format really shines because it has double the amount of length to explain certain things and some things that absolutely need to be explained, like I mentioned before with the Lloyd and Harumi thing. It would absolutely benefit from that explanation, even if the explanation is only like two minutes. Two minutes out of 22 is way better than two minutes out of 11, which is like literally a fifth of the runtime. So, what... So... I wouldn't also mind if there was some sort of, like, little bit of a balance between the 22 and 11 minute formats, because I believe there are certain episodes that work with certain formats. I remember mentioning the, this in my, in a video as well, um, where basically I talk about the 22 versus 11 minute format video, where... Basically, I said, if it's a more story-intensive episode, stick with the 22. Except for backstory episodes. But if it's a more action-based episode just to get the plot going, then stick with 11. Um, there, now, there are certain exceptions, just like I said. But for the most part, that's how it should be. But with 22, while yes, the episodes will be longer, they will... They will eventually be more helpful in the long run simply because they carry more impactful stories and largely m better written ones. This is going to piss some people off from about what, I, what I'm about to say. But next, we need new main characters. <sighs> I know. I just probably pissed off at least 30 to 50% of the fan base right there with that one statement. But hear me out. I ain't saying I hate the ninja. Although I did make a video kind of implying that. So who knows. But basically what I'm saying is that. it Crystallized just proves to me that. The ninja don't really have any more good stories to tell. Anymore. Especially Lloyd. Because essentially with Lloyd they're just rehashing the same old shit. And disguising it as a new story. How many times do I keep saying it? It's um, but with some other characters, they had attempts at stories, but they were butchered, as I mentioned previously, under the 11-minute format, such as Zane's unplanned PTSD story, which would have been amazing, but unfortunately that never came to fruition. And some characters that absolutely need development, like Jay, just simply get shafted to the side. Honestly, the only character to have really benefited from Wild Brain is Cole. Well, I used to say Nia, Cole and Nia, but Nia was royally fucked and crystallized, so she gets taken out. And that's not really a good ratio. One in six ninja improved. All the others were average at best or downright awful at worst. And this just proves that if you aren't even going to put in the effort to make new stories for these for these characters that have been around for over a decade, you might as well start fresh. And it's not, I'm not saying that the, the old ninja can't show up every once in a while as side characters. That's fine. That's cool. But we need some new ninja to take up the mantle, especially considering, remember that Kai quote from season eight? Ninja don't last forever. And 
honestly, I truthfully believe in that. I do think they need to pass on their gifts and, and skills to a new batch of ninjas. Mostly because I just want to see how what their characters are. I just want to see what the new ninja, the next generation of ninjas is going to be. Because that really piques my interest. But it's hard to say goodbye to these main ninjas that we've known for over a decade. But in order for Ninjago to progress as a series, it has to be done. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And finally, my top hope for Ninjago 2023, aka Ninjago United, is that there will be more mature storytelling with no corporate meddling from LEGO. I truthfully believe, this is conspiracy theory Luke talking, but I truthfully believe LEGO purposely messed up the story of Crystallized to make it more kid-friendly. At least kid-friendly in their eyes. And that, to me, negatively affected Crystallized in so many ways. Now, I'm not saying kid-friendly is bad, but I feel that LEGO is trying to make it too kid-friendly, and that's not a good sign. Um, hopefully I'll make a video on this topic explaining this further, but mature stories is something that Ninjago absolutely needs right now, especially with how playing it safe it's gotten in the re in recent years. We need something that really break that really takes a lot of risk. I know some people are gonna say Sons of Garmadon, like Sons of Garmadon, but that's not necessarily the best example because. Mature story doesn't always mean a great story. You have to remember, just because it's written maturely doesn't necessarily equate to a well-written story. So, I want a well-written mature story, or well-written story with mature themes. Because that is absolutely needed for Ninjago right now. Otherwise, it's going to keep falling under these same status quo principles and this predictability cycle that everyone is just gonna see, it's gonna happen again, and to me, it, this will lead to the death of the Ninjago TV show, if this doesn't happen eventually. Because LEGO can, can only put it off for so long before it gets tiring, it gets repetitive, and then it ultimately gets shelved. And I hate saying that, LEGO, is meddling with it because there was a time where I believed Lego truly did care about Ninjago but nowadays they just simply do not or at least they don't care about the show as for the sets I think they care uh, just enough basically but anyways what do you guys think what are your hopes for Ninjago 2023 let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And click on the notification bell to receive every video that I will upload. And I'll see all you folks in the next video. Bye-bye.